All right, let's work out some examples of Cauchy's integral formula. Uh, I want to remind you of the key formula that we're going to be using. I'll put it up here. Uh, we're looking for uh, f of z over z minus z naught dz, and we know this is 2 pi i f of z naught. Obviously, there's a lot of conditions to check, but that's the basic formula that we're using. And so when I look at this problem, maybe I'll go ahead and uh, sketch a picture. There it is, lightning speed. Um, I notice that, sure enough, this particular uh, point where the bottom is zero, that lives inside my contour C. So that's good. So I'm just going to think about this as the integral along, I'll just write C to zero, of F of Z over Z minus minus one DZ in my mind f of z, of course, is just e to the z, right? And now, at this point, I just use Cauchy's integral formula. Everything is clear. My circle here has positive orientation. I'm assuming that uh, my function f is analytic everywhere, let alone inside uh, and on c, and this z naught lives inside c, so this is exactly 2 pi i times f of negative 1, which is just 2 pi i over e. So that's a first example of how one can go about using Cauchy's integral formula. Let's do another example. Let me delete our formula. So another example, here it is. So I've got this, uh, this fun looking rational function. Notice now that there's two things downstairs, not just one. Let's see what happens. So I've got this circle uh, uh, centered at 1 of radius 2. So something like this. Hopefully my circle will work. Ah, that's good enough. Okay. So looking at this guy, let's look at our points downstairs. So negative 3 and 2 are both of interest. I'll put those in orange. 2 lives inside our circle. Negative 3 doesn't live inside our circle. That's good. This tells you exactly how you want to work this out. So I'm going to want to let this one be my f of z. And if I define my f of z as the function enclosed in purple, then that f of z is analytic inside and on my c. And so I can just use Cauchy's integral formula. This is equal to the integral over c. Um, of f of z over z minus 2 dz, and I should write down what my f is. Somehow that's very important to be precise here, so we're going to let f of z be z squared plus 3z minus 1 over z plus 3. So then this is equal to this is equal to, well, just 2 pi i times f of plug in 2. And you can work this out yourself. And you're going to get 18 pi i over 5. You just plug in 2 and then multiply by 2 pi i. So you get 9 fifths for f of 2. So that's it. That's how you can work this problem out with the Cauchy integral formula. The key there was noticing that even though z plus 3 is downstairs, um, it has a singularity. It, it, it has a zero outside of our curve, so it doesn't really matter. You can include that in with your function and make it work. Let's do one more problem. This one is a little bit trickier, probably the trickiest one so far. So I want us to work out problem number three, and we'll do the uh, integral over the circle centered at 0 radius 2 of e to the pi z over z squared plus 1 dz. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do is factor that quadratic downstairs and write it so we can see uh, where it misbehaves. And so I'm going to write this as this integral uh, over the contour C to 0 
e to the pi z, and then this bottom factors as z plus i times z minus i. Okay, let's draw a picture of this and, and ask ourselves if we're going to be able to use the Cauchy integral formula or not. So I've got this nice circle centered at zero, radius two. Let me scoot that over and get it rough. Okay, radius two. Now, where are the singularities of this function? Well, there's one at minus i and there's one at plus i. So let's put those right there and there. And now what I want you to see is, directly speaking, there's no way to use the Cauchy integral formula. Because, for example, if you try to make this your f of z, that f is not analytic on and in my closed contour C. And likewise, if I do this, then that F is not analytic on or in C. So we're kind of in trouble. There's no way to directly apply the Cauchy integral formula. But if you remember, at the beginning of this lecture series, lecture two, we learned the Cauchy, Cauchy Gorsau theorem for multiply connected domains. And so it says that if you have a little curve, let's say this one, and a little curve around that point, that you can break up your big integral in terms of the little integrals. You can break up the integral of your function over the big curve in terms of integrals over the little curves. So we're going to do that, actually. And you might be wondering, how am I going to do that? I don't have any curves, uh, little curves inside of this function. Well, I'm just going to make some. So I'm going to think about uh, these, this curve as C1, let's say, and we're going to think about this curve as C2, and I'm going to let C1 be the circle, okay, so circle of radius, let's say one quarter, just to be safe, centered at I, and I'm going to let C2 be the circle, radius one quarter should be fine, as long as they don't touch, right, so I could do a quarter, I could do an eighth, there's lots of options here. But we'll let those let C2 be the circle centered at minus i with radius one quarter. And so now, if you think about it, if this is my big C, then this particular integral, let's call this star. So we can say, so by the Cauchy Gorsau theorem for multiply connected domains, my integral star is equal to the integral over C1 of, you know what, I don't want to call that thing F. I want to be safe. So let's actually copy this so I can just paste it. So it's the integral over C1 of that function, dz, plus the integral over C2 of this function, dz. That's a really nice trick. And now, stop and think about what that gains us. Well, when I look at this integral, let's say C1, this one, okay, the problem uh, point here is what? Z minus I has a singularity at I. So the problem point is I, and that means this function, this particular function, is now analytic inside and on C1. And for the second integral, the problem is at minus i, so this function is analytic inside and on C2. So I can apply the Cauchy integral formula for both of these separate integrals. So let's work it out. So for this one, let me use a, a, a different color. Let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do this one. So for the first one, we're on C1. The problem is at i, so this is going to be my f. For the second one, the problem is at minus i, so this is going to be my, I don't know, we'll call it g, and so we can work it out. So let's, uh, let's think about, let's go ahead and, and write this down. Let's let f of z equals e to the pi z over z plus i, and we'll let g of z equals e to the pi z over z minus i. Okay, so then we'll just put an arrow down here, and this is now equal to, I said switch, black to switch back to black. This is equal to 
the integral over C1 of f of z over z minus i dz plus the integral over C2 of g of z over z plus i dz. This is exciting. And now at this point, I can use the Cauchy integral formula on each one of these. So this is going to be 2 pi i times f of plug in i, all right, plus 2 pi i times g of plug in minus i. Well, when I plug in i next to f, let's pull, scroll up so we can see what we're going to get. This is 2 pi i times e to the i pi over 2i, so that's f of i, plus 2 pi i, g of minus i, so this is e to the minus i pi, over minus 2i. And fortunately for me, a lot of stuff cancels, right? I just get a, uh, let's see, I get a, a pi e to the i pi, and then I get a here for this one, whoops, uh, the minus 2i's cancel, and so I get a minus pi e to the minus i pi. And let's think about it together. So e to the i pi is what? Minus 1. And e to the, so, so this becomes minus pi and minus a minus pi. And so this actually cancels out, and I just get 0. So that's it. That is how you work out this problem, and we'll stop there.